bit of a follow-up video from my previous video. A couple of people asked me some very interesting questions, um, essentially having to do with um, experience and what I meant when I said that there is, in a certain sense, among other things, something of a pit of horror at the center of existence. Now, to sort of explain what I mean by that, I guess I have to sort of explain my own metaphysics or my own epistemology or whatever. Um, and my epistemology starts with the cogito, which I think therefore I am, um, and I sort of work outward from there. Um, I know that I have experiences. Experiences seem very real, even if the events themselves that my experiences are of may not be real, and I may have no way of determining whether or not they're real in any absolute sense. Um, I have experiences that I like and that I don't like. In other words, desire. I have certain, you know, desires and aversions, or just permutations on desire, positive, negative. Um, and that these, these experiences and my desires um, have an effect on me. They have, I won't say permanent effects, but they affect that which is me, or which seems to be, from this vantage point, something like a me. I'm not trying to argue whether or not there is an I or anything like that. I'm just sort of referring to the first-person view of everything. Um, <clears throat> so the issue of this sort of pit of horror at the center of everything refers to, I guess, the reality of our, of our experiences. We perceive things, these perceptions form experiences, and these experiences are about as real as anything can get for us. In fact, I don't think that we can gain any knowledge whatsoever outside of that which we experience. Um, and... Um, even if it's sort of something, someone telling us something, we form an image or a, a reality of that idea, of that knowledge in our own brain, and that sort of becomes an experience. Um, it's a bit of a difficult thing to talk about, but I'll give it my best shot. Um, so if experiences are as real as anything can get, um, then we have to assume that if we have grossly negative experiences, then something real has happened. We've discovered some sort of, I won't say a truth, but in as much as there is a, a truth out there, that experience is a truth to us. Um, so I would say that at the center of, it, of everything are just a number of experiences upon which we would base anything in terms of our epistemology, in terms of our cosmology, in terms of our um, our uh, worldview, um, our uh, well, pretty much everything, our metaphysics, um, and this means that whatever we experience is real. So, if I experience something absolutely horrific, that becomes real to me. Um, even if, again, the actual events that I think that I'm experiencing aren't real, then but the experience of believing or of going through these events is real. So at the center of everything is something of a pit of horror, I would say, but there's all kinds of other things at the center of what we are. Um, I guess it goes right down to value, like the value of your experiences. Um, I would say that, that, say, the horrifying experiences are a lot easier to refer to, uh, sort of clinically. Now, that's an interesting question, why that is. Um, it's, um, I think it may be cultural as much as anything else, um, because we can make movies about extreme horror, and they're, they're very obvious, but we can make, it's very difficult to make movies about, say, existential joy, or... Um, being one with the universe or something like this. Um, the, a moment of, say, um, I don't know, uh, supreme, um, supreme happiness, supreme self-achievement um, or something like this. Just the, whatever you want to call the extreme positive uh, experiences that humans 
are obviously capable of having. Um, how do you illustrate those? It's like when you, like, if you've ever read the entire Divine Comedy, um, when you read, say, the, um, the Paradiso, which is Dante's version of what well, he's trying to describe heaven, it seems dry and sterile. But when you read the Inferno, <laughs> hell, it's very graphic and it grabs you. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's interesting that that seems to be the case, but I think it has something to do with our desires because when you fear something, it seems more real than if you actually desire something, or in many cases it does. Um, if you read the Paradiso, you really want to get into what that is about because everyone, I presume, wants to be in their own version of paradise or whatever. That's what paradise is, I guess, is that which we believe is the supremely good, beneficial state or place to be in. And hell is its, its opposite. So maybe that's one of the reasons why we, why the negative seems more real than the positive. Um, although I just sort of said, in, in the previous video, I said that, that there is a pit of horror or terror or whatever at the, at the center of everything. I kind of meant it only in, in terms of um, boiling existence down to its essence. Um, it wasn't, I'm not saying that there is this place there or it's some sort of psychological compartment in our brain or, you know, just some sort of whatever. I, I would just put it down to, I'm, I'm describing an experience. I'm describing um, an experience of something that, um, being an experience, um, is something that we can sort of say is as real as reality gets. Um, but does that mean that... Um, that that's the only reality out there. No, I would say not. Um, and I would say also that it's not so much our aim in spite of what some people might think, or I wouldn't say that it's a, it's a reasonable aim to want to avoid that kind of experience as much as I think it's necessary to integrate it into the overall experience of existence or of, of being conscious or consciousness itself. Um, in other words, if you look at things like horror, uh, we're drawn to them. As I say, instinctively, when I decided to go at the Divine Comedy, I read The Inferno first. <laughs> I think probably The Inferno is easily the most commonly read of the three, the Paradiso, the, the um, what was the other one? The Paradiso, The Inferno, and Purgatorio. Um, or if you see a picture of, say, um, um, Gandalf, confronting one of the ring wraiths or something like this. Your eye is drawn to the ring wraith and um, not to Gandalf. Um, this sort of thing, I guess, it's because we believe that evil is easier to conceptualize and wrap our heads around than good. Um, but it's not, not to say that good isn't there. But we do seek out horror in many manifestations. I certainly do, and I've always been fascinated by, own, my, by my own penchant for it. And the more horrific, the better. Like cosmic horror, like things like demonic horror and um, uh, violence and slasher films. That does nothing to me. But cosmic horror, <laughs> uh, you know, Lovecraft and the Gaudy, that fascinates me. Um, and it's interesting that, in a sense, you know, you're that fascination is almost a transformative experience because you're sort of turning an aversion into a desire, right? If you pick up and read, say, I don't know, a Stephen King novel, you're consciously seeking out that horror. Why do you want to do that? Well, you probably because you want to draw it to yourself and own it and master it. I would put it that way. You want to integrate it into an overall healthy uh, or balanced um, self, I suppose. Um, you know, it's why people, you know, adrenaline junkies like to get into dangerous situations and things like that because, well, you know, as... Bill Bobagan said, it's a dangerous thing, Frodo, stepping out your front door. Well, existence itself is dangerous, but we want to come to terms with that danger, so we kind of indulge it a little bit to sort of put it in its proper perspective. If you try and push it away from yourself, well, you sort of, you have to push everything else away with, you know, along with it. If you, if you don't want to have horror anymore, that's fine. You can stop, you can stop ever feeling horror ever again or ever feeling pain or loss or anything. You know, there you go. No more horror. Um, but if you're going to sort of say, I want to explore what it means to be alive, what it means to be a human, well, horror is part of that package. Extreme suffering is part of that package.
package. Um, and it, it, it does seem to be down at the very basic level of existence, uh, suffering, horror, uh, terror, uh, all this stuff. But again, if we integrate it into the larger picture, where it doesn't so much sort of complement the other stuff in there, but it's simply an accepted and acknowledged part of the entirety of, uh, of a worldview that tries to be as honest as possible, that tries to be as, as realistic as possible in terms of looking at reality and looking at the human condition and looking at human existence, you know, just base existential thinking. Um, I think that you have to make room for the negative stuff, for the extremely negative stuff. And, you know, you have to almost admit to yourself that in a way you, you're, you're drawn to that kind of thing. That's what I meant when I said um, that at the base of everything is a horror. Um, I, I would say that it's there at the base of everything, but there are many other things there. I guess it's just my way of saying that we may be on, to, we may be on the wrong track if we seek to sort of eliminate um, suffering or eliminate uh, um, all the negative stuff. It seems to be just part of what we are. It seems to be part of experience itself. Um, but again, you can put these things into a larger perspective. You can put these things into, um, into a larger view that can encompass everything. Um, as I say, you, you, you can put some people in the worst possible scenario and they still want to continue to live. And you can put people in the best possible scenario and they don't want to live. Um, you know, what will that tell you? You know, um, why is it that some people are simply drawn to things that everyone else is quite convinced is terrible? Or I think that pretty much all of us are, are drawn to things that even we ourselves believe are terrible. Ask anybody who goes to see horror movies why they go to see it. And they, I don't think they'll be able to give you a very clear answer. But I think, uh, you know, sort of subconsciously, that's what it is. They, they're, they're just sort of saying there is that in me and it, that, that part of me needs to be fed. I don't want to actually get into any dangerous or terrifying uh, situations or circumstances. But part of me craves that feeling. And, you know, that's the same reason, I guess, why we, why we watch soap operas or happy movies or romantic comedies or something like this. It's not real, of course, uh, but we have experiences while we're watching these things, while we're engaging in these sorts of things, uh, vicarious things. But uh, still, you know, it meets some sort of need in us um, to be balanced. And I guess that's what, you know, the distraction industry caters to, the distraction industry in all its forms, you know, art, literature movies, all this kind of thing. It's all sort of dealing with the various experiences. And another comment in uh, in that video referred to that. It was, uh, uh, I forget who it was, said that, well, experience is kind of why we're here. Uh, it's an interesting statement um, because I, I'm not sure I think there is any reason why we're here. But again, how do you interpret that? What do you mean by here and what do you mean by why we're here? Um, you know, it's... Are, are we only sort of attached to this world because we want to be? Yes. Well, I think that desire is definitely one of the reasons why the sort of the universe as we perceive it exists is because we want something to exist. We want to have experiences, I think. I think that the, the desire to continue having experiences is essentially uh, the same thing as the desire to stay alive. Uh, it's not so much that we fear death as we fear the cessation or we don't want the cessation of our experiences in a general sense of course um, I know that there are plenty of people out there who don't like living so I, I'm, I'm not going to sort of um, downplay that aspect of things but uh, again it's you know it's just sort of that that's only one sort of extreme position on the bell curve and the other extreme is somebody who's madly in love with existence and thinks everything is perfect uh, that's what their experiences have taught them. The, the reality that they have lived is sort of convinced them of the validity of that point of view. Um, so I hope I've made that clear, although I'm known for sort of vague and enigmatic videos. Um, but uh, if, it, if it's unclear, I'll follow up. <laughs>